The Legend of Dragoon offers a unique spin on the popular JRPG turn-based battle system with its use of additions, but how does this impact the game experience for the player? Let's discuss. Hello everyone and welcome to Critique Hit here on the Game Maze channel. I'm your host Kados and today we are on to our third video in JRPG July where we discuss The Legend of Dragoon. First things first, The Legend of Dragoon was released on the original PlayStation in December 1999 in Japan and over the following year and a bit reached other parts of the world. It was created by Sony Computer Entertainment as a first party title to add to the growing collection of JRPGs on the PlayStation system. The Legend of Dragoon used a turn-based combat system, quite similar to many other JRPGs at the time. However, it has one very noticeable difference. The Addition System, which allows characters to perform combos against the enemy. So today I want to specifically talk about the additions and how it is both good and bad from a game design perspective. Additions are a combo system in The Legend of Dragoon. We'll go into depth a bit more later on, but in short they are a system where a perfectly timed button press can allow the character to chain a follow-up attack and depending on the addition can lead to more inputs therefore increasing the total damage dealt. Similar systems for it include Squall's Gunblade in Final Fantasy VIII for the PlayStation as well as Super Mario RPG on the SNES. However, the Legend of Dragoon system is a bit more advanced. So what do additions bring that is new? Well, in JRPGs with a traditional turn-based battle system, players would select attacks, abilities, etc from a list of available commands, and then the characters would act out these commands. For example, by selecting attack, the character would run up and attack the enemy. Some variations of the turn-based battle systems were seen in the two previous videos, 5 Fantasy X and Suicoden. This system, while having some positives, can create a sort of disconnect between the player and the character, since the player sees themselves more as a commander rather than posing direct responsive control over the character. To best illustrate this point, let's take 5 Fantasy X. Here you tell Tidus to attack, whereas in a JRPG with an action style combat system, such as Tales of Zillia, which will be coming next week, you have more control over the attack and feels much more like you are the character. This is how other games, especially action titles like Zelda and Assassin's Creed, can achieve immersion because it feels much more like you are the character due to having more control over their actions. This distance between the player and the character might also be part of the reason why we see much more action focused JRPGs in less traditional turn based ones. However, it should be noted that in some JRPGs, such as Pokemon, it fits the game design to keep this commander-esque role rather than have direct control. But getting back to The Legend of Dragoon, it used the turn based system, however the additions add an element of direct control. So in battles, there would be the same basic principle of selecting commands and characters executing them. However, when a character attacks, there is a timing based minigame where if the player successfully presses X, <laughs> oh wrong show, at the correct time it would progress through the combo chain and it feels more so like you're attacking. Your rhythm is matching the actions being conducted by your character. So in my opinion, The Legend of Dragoon does a better job than most other turn based JRPGs in reducing the distance the player feels from the actions done by the characters. Note, a couple of characters such as the Bogus Ashana don't have any additions, however there's more exception to the rule. Let's go a bit more in depth about additions now. There are a variety of different additions the characters can use, which are learned as the characters level up. Between the different additions, we can see some inflict more damage, gain more SP, and have less combo stages. Although there are two more parameters not mentioned here, which include the chance for it to be counted, and perhaps most important, the difficulty of the addition, which is subjective. The difficulty of an addition is the timing between each input, as well as the number of total inputs. Sometimes this may mean a short or long wait between presses, and sometimes a mix of the two, which can be quite tricky, or at least initially, to pull off. So with using additions, it is very important that we conduct the complete combo successfully in order to maximise damage, SP gain, as well as to prevent being countered. Failure to complete the full addition will also give less than desirable results, such as lower damage dealt, less SP gain, and if we mess up during a counter moment, our character will actually incur some damage themselves. Therefore, a new addition can take some time to learn, and be able to execute the correct timing, which will result in many failed attempts. But successfully learning it can feel quite rewarding. It's as if when we are learning the new move, the character is too. 
Or maybe it's more like when the characters learn the new move, we are as well. Either way, we are growing with the characters. Or another way to look at this would be seeing it as a form of progress. We discussed progression in a previous Sui Coden video, and the additions system also adds a different unique form of progression. At set levels, we acquire new additions, or moves, and this isn't exactly anything new. However, each time we successfully execute an addition, its use count goes up, and when it reaches 20, 40, 60, and following 80 successful executions, it levels up, which can result in either an increase in damage when using it, or more SP gained, or both. The addition system has both player and game focused progression. As we initially learn the timing pattern of the addition, we may make mistakes, and it might take a while until we finally get our rhythm. But here's the interesting thing, as we get better with the addition system, in return our characters also improve, so we see this real interesting way we connect with the character. Typically in turn based JRPGs, the main skill utilised is on a strategic level, focusing on what is the best action to perform now, and planning for the future. The Legend of Dragon incorporates a type of skill not normally found in this genre, which is quite interesting. However, the addition system does have some negatives, and now we'll discuss those. Firstly, we can only set one addition to use per character from the menu screen. This is good, because we need to spend some time learning the precise timing and flow of the addition. However, since you're stuck with one addition, and unable to change it during battles, it can mean that just as you change to use a new addition you're not familiar with, you're forced into a boss fight. And since you aren't familiar with the new addition, you may fail your attacks, meaning your damage input and SP gain may be severely lowered, which can result in frustration and potentially game over. A possible solution to this would be the ability to change additions mid-battle, or have a couple to choose from. This could also lead to possible tactical options, such as being able to focus more on using higher damage additions, or to focus more on acquiring more SP, depending on the situation. Now, the last negative I wish to discuss is the efficiency of this battle system. We discussed efficiency in the Final Fantasy X video a few weeks back, so we'll just do the basics for this. The battle system in The Legend of Dragoon feels so inefficient when playing. The intro to each fight is long and drawn out, with showing the battleground, then the enemies, then our characters fighting them. Time between turns seem unnecessarily long, and some enemy attacks just feel so slow. If you have to revisit old places, where the enemies are especially weak, this is quite excruciating. To actually maximise our damage on the enemy, we need to fully complete the addition when attacking, which obviously takes up more time, may not be easy to do, and requires some degree of effort. This means fighting normal encounters feel so long and frustrating, which adds to the overall grindy feel of the game. Now, there are items so you can ignore these enemy encounters, however, holding these can take up valuable space in the already very limited number inventory system. I do have some possible suggestions. Now, I do understand this game is over 15 years old, so they may not be possible to implement back then, but this is more a suggestion for any future designers wishing to implement a similar battle system in their JRPG. Perhaps implement some sort of auto battle system, which can speed up encounters with these weaker enemies. The characters could do less damage, but overall it would save time and effort. Or to implement a system like in Wild Arms 3, where the character could simply ignore battles when they outlevel the enemies in the area. These suggestions could help alleviate some of the frustration from participating in unnecessary battles and could provide a better experience. So, although the addition system does add some great benefits with engagement, character connection and showing a way of skill progression unusual in turn based JRPGs, there are some issues with the system, which with some tweaks could be greatly improved. For those that have played The Legend of Dragoon, did you enjoy the addition system? Or did you think it was just not your style? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, share, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming Tales of Celia episode to conclude JRPG July. Also, if you haven't already, check out the videos of Sui Coden and Final Fantasy X. Sui Coden is the one on the left there on the screen. Alright guys, this is Kados, logging out.